So we're going to look at a quick guide to writing the 13 mark questions. So 13 marks sounds like a lot, but you can divide it up. Six marks are for A01, your description. Um, you should do a sentence introducing or defining the topic or debate. Uh, then three marks for your first study or theory, so three things about it. And then three marks for your second study or theory. Uh, then for your seven marks from the AO3, which is your evaluation and judgment, six marks will be for the evaluation, which is two to three evaluation points explained and linked back to the study or theory, and then one mark for your conclusion. So the structure that I would suggest would be to start off with an introductory sentence, so that's where you define the research method or the debate that it's asking you about in the question stem. In your first paragraph, this is where you're talking about your first study or theory. Um, we're just going to look at studies today, so you would talk about the psychologist, um, the year and the aim in a sentence. Another sentence on the method, including reference to the method um, that's in the question and any conclusions they made. If this was on a theory, you would need to have three bullet points um, about the theory, three kind of key ideas from the theory. For the second paragraph, you need to give an advantage or disadvantage, some sort of evaluation of the method in the question, explain it and link it to the study or theory. Paragraph three, again the same, an advantage or a disadvantage of the method in the question, uh, explained and linked to the study. Paragraph four is quite like number one, but it's with your second study or second theory. So if it's a study, you're gonna do the psychologist, the year and the aim, the method referring back to the research method in the question, and any conclusions they made. If it's a theory, again, just three key ideas from that theory. In your fifth paragraph, it's gonna be another evaluation point linking to um, your second study or theory and why it's perhaps better than the research method or the debate in the first um, study or theory. And then finally, you have a concluding sentence. So based on your three evaluation points that you've made, do you agree or disagree with the statement? Do you agree with perhaps some parts uh, and not others? And a quick summary on why. So here is the example we're going to look at. Use your knowledge and understanding from across the psychology course to explain how far you agree with the following viewpoint. Case studies are of little use as you can never generalise them to a wider population. In your answer, you should refer to Freud's study of the Wolfman and at least one other study from a different area of psychology you have studied. So that first part, use your knowledge and understanding from across the psychology course, that will always be the same. Um, that's saying that you have to kind of um, collate your knowledge from different areas of psychology. The middle sentence will be different, so it could ask you about a research method or it could ask you about a debate. So any research methods that you've learned, qualitative and quantitative data, lab experiments, field experiments, um, anything like that. Um, or the debate, so nature, nurture, free will determinism and holism versus reductionism. And then in that third sentence, it will tell you which study you should refer to. And then it tells you have to refer to at least one other study from a different area of psychology. So in this example, or in this question, they've asked you to refer to Freud's study of the Wolfman. That is in the sleep and dreaming topic. So I would need to pick a study that to contrast with it that is not a case study and is not in the sleep and dreaming topic. For example, Bickman's uh, field experiment on obedience. Before you get started, it's also a good idea to just to bullet point some strengths and weaknesses of case studies. So that's what we are evaluating in the question. So I've come up with a strength that is, gives us rich in-depth data about a particular case and also three weaknesses. So it's small samples are hard to generalise, as it says in the question. Um, it's hard to replicate, which means it could be unreliable and that the interpretation of data could be subjective. So let's start to write the um, answer. So the first thing we have to do is our introductory sentence. So defining the research method in the question. Case studies are studies that involve a very small sample size, such as one individual. That's your introduction done. Moving on to paragraph number one. So the first study we told was Wolfman, so we were told we have to use that. So in Freud's 1980 case study, he aimed to explain and treat the psychological problems experienced by the Wolfman through dream analysis. A really quick brief introduction of the aim, the psychologist and the year. Done. The second part then, we're talking about the method including a reference to the research method in the question. So he did this through a longitudinal case study whereby he interviewed the Wolfman over four years. Since Wolfman was the only participant, this is an example of a case study. So I've emphasised the fact that that is a case study because that is what the question is about. Finally then, the conclusions that he made. Freud concluded that the Wolfman's traumatic childhood events, witnessing his parents have sexual intercourse, had been repressed into his unconscious mind and that this had influenced his behaviour. 
So I've got three things, well, kind of more than three things really there, about uh, Freud's study um, to hit those three first three A01 marks. So now we're going to move on to evaluating it. The whole time we're going to try and link it back to that stem and also to the study. Although not generalizable, a strength of using a case study method is that it allows rich in-depth data to be gathered about the case. For example, Freud was able to get a good understanding about Wolfram's experiences so that, he, so that he could then personalize the treatment Wolfram would need. This would not be possible with a larger sample. So we're now here showing um, that we're disagreeing with that original statement and that there is some use to case studies because it can personalize the treatment for Wolfman, um, which you cannot do necessarily with a larger sample. So an advantage of a case study. Our second oh, sorry, our third paragraph is going to be another evaluation. As the statement says, a weakness of case studies is that they are not generalizable. Freud could not apply his findings of repression and the unconscious mind to anyone beyond the Wolfman. If he had used a larger sample and found the same results amongst them, then this would improve the generalizability of his results. So we are kind of saying that we are agreeing with that statement in this paragraph here. So you've got four to six of your AO3 marks there. Um, you're now going to move on to do the same thing for study two. So study two could be anything that was not in sleep and dreaming and that is not a case study. I just picked Bickman. A study that was not a case study was Bickman's 1974 experiment on obedience. He aimed to investigate whether obedience rates change depending on the uniform of the individual giving the order. So again, that's the psychologist, the year and the aim of the study. Now let's have a look at the method, including a reference to the recent method in the question. So he did this by conducting a field experiment whereby a confederate ordered a participant to complete a task. This was repeated in civilian clothes, a milkman uniform and a guard uniform. Bickman approached 153 participants and therefore this was not a case study. Again, just really cementing that we understand that a case study is a very small sample and a sample of 153 is not a case study. So we're using this to contrast the case study um, study of the Wolfman. The final part then for the AO1 marks is any conclusions made. So Bickman found high obedience rates for the guard uniform and low obedience rates for the civilian uniform clothes, suggesting that the situation, suggesting that situational factors do affect obedience. So again, we've shown that we know what happens in that study. We've hit all of our AO1 marks now. The last thing we're going to do is just put in another evaluation just to really cement our AO3 marks. So we've gone for a strength of using a larger sample is that the studies are easier to replicate. Bickman was able to investigate obedience with a large number of participants and another psychologist could easily replicate this, therefore suggesting his findings are reliable. So we've linked that back to Bickman. Let's now link it back to Freud. However, it is unlikely that there's another person who has had the same experiences and dreams as Wolfman, and so we cannot replicate the case study, so the findings are unreliable. So that's really just to secure our knowledge that we understand advantages of case study versus not using a case study. To just finish off our answer, we need to do a concluding sentence. You have to have that sentence um, at the end about how far you agree with that statement, because that's what the question is asking you. So whilst I agree that case studies are not generalizable, and so their use is limited, I disagree that there is minimal use, given that they can give us insight into abnormal cases and allow personalized treatment, such as in the case of Wolfman. So if you do all that, you should be reaching the top levels there and hopefully the top marks.